So as we get into uh, the presentation, uh, a quick overview on Castrol. Uh, quick, uh, Castrol is approximately a 50 year old company. Um, they have two primary uh, product lines. Uh, one is the Castrol line, the other is Stone, and they vary from uh, small bottling to uh, 1,000 bottles an hour to up to 24,000 bottles per hour. So uh, the Castrol line is really 55 bottles a minute or 6,000 bottles an hour and under, and then the other lines are uh, above that. So a few clients you may know, uh, Pernod Ricard, uh, Moet Hennessy, uh, Chandon, um, so large, large organizations. Uh, with that also, um, you'd recognize uh, from a Castrol line, uh, some key components like um, uh, Romani Conti is a uh, premier client, uh, which is the premier French uh, Burgundian uh, uh, wine producer. Um, also, within the US, so a few uh, key clients you'd recognize, um, I would say Los Pinos Winery in Texas. Um, there's lots, all, there's probably 150 in the US, but in, in the Southwest and then um, uh, Homestead Winery in Texas as well, um, along with uh, a few of the Fiamonts that are there. One would be Terra Winery, um, UC Davis uses this as well for both cork and screw cap. And then finally, uh, we have Chris on board uh, with Anatom, Anatom Wines, and he's going to go through and go through the details uh, of his experience with this. So, so quick to go over some of the key attributes. Uh, obviously, it's, it's extremely compact, uh, which which is nice for small, medium size to be able to roll in, roll out. Um, but with being compact, it's full featured. So one of the key features is that when you set the level of the bottle, it also sets the level of the filler. And so, which is great. So what you do is when you fill and operate this machine, you set the bottle and then you will set the fill height and you're ready to go. So. Uh, it's pretty quick, pretty easy. You're only making two major adjustments um, and they're all done um, pretty simply. And we'll go through all those details. Um, the other key components or uh, attributes are as you fill and you'll fill at approximately six o'clock if you, if you think of this as a clock uh, and then the bottle turns around and the bottle will transfer over to the corker. So there's no handling once you put the bottle on the spindle. Um, so after it transfers over, uh, the wine gets leveled. Um, and then with that, it inerts uh, uh, an inert gas back into the bowl. And so that protects the wine. So, and then after it comes out of the, the carousel and into the corker, then there's an opportunity of either pulling it off by hand, um, at the exit or actually setting up a labeler to attach through it. So, um, and then, so let's, uh, let's get into some of the key winemaking aspects of it. Um, uh, no oxygen pickup. So, uh, what's nice about this is when the wine comes in, and we'll go through all these details in the next slide, but the wine comes in, it goes into the bowl. Uh, when it gets put into the bottle, the oxygen in the bottle goes out through the uh, siphon tube. Um, so it doesn't go back into the bowl. Uh, and then with the inert gas on top, uh, you get a clean blanket of uh, protection for the wine. So again, uh, with the filler head and the way it's designed, you get uh, a big umbrella uh, in the bottle, which makes it gentle filling, level fill heights, um, which enables the advantage of this machine is small lots. So um, you don't have to deal with the mobile bottling where you're needing a thousand cases or 500 cases or whatever you can do, 50 or 100 or whatever the case count you want. Um, so 
With that, uh, of course, it includes a vacuum corker and can work with either synthetic or natural corks. And there's advantages of, you can also um, purchase additional closures, whether it's screw cap, crown cap, or even um, um, T-tops. So it's very simple to sanitize and extremely reliable. And, and Chris will speak to that and his experience with that as well. David, do you want me to pick that up now? Hold on a second, Chris. I'm trying to get to this next slide. There we go. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a video of the uh, Comet or of the Fiamont, and you're gonna see it, and we're just gonna talk through it. It'll be about a minute and a half. Um, and then I'm gonna go through the filler bowl and then more details. Um, so let's go through and show you the, the video right now. So this is the overview of the machine. It's the same as what you saw in the picture. This was uh, a couple of years ago, uh, somewhere in, uh, I think in Czechoslovakia. So as you notice, as you go around, you see the control panel down to the left, the filler spouts uh, up there on the right. Very simple to use. Uh, you'll see this connected with a pump. So this machine has the ability of both either gravity fed or through a pump and those there's a uh, uh, electro uh, sensor for the valve. So it connects to your pump. So uh, as it fills, it'll turn on and turn off your pump. So as he's loading the carousel, you can see that the spouts move out. So that way you're not bending the spout. There's a little um, uh, pliability with those uh, or rocking arm in there. You can also fill these uh, with every half spout. So you can take half the spouts out uh, if, if you're doing smaller quantities. So you don't need to have every spout there. Uh, that also saves the longevity of it. You can see the transfer plate from how the bottle gets filled and then transfers over. Then the next step is the leveling there and then the vacuum corking. So simple, compact, and then rolls out onto the carousel, which won't trap into uh, back into the um, star set. With Chris's bottles, you'll see uh, the leveling because it'll be clean and clear. So it'll be a little easier to see. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. So a quick overview of the filler and see some of the key components, and then I'll go through the scenario of where the wine comes in. So the filler bowl up on top is the wine inlet, that's the orange. Uh, the spout is where the green line is on the right. As you can see the horseshoe shape. Um, on the right, there's a siphon, which is in, in red. And that's where, uh, if you put the bottle up in there, as the wine's coming down, it's pushing the air out the siphon tube so it does not go back into the bowl. Um, and then uh, approximately where the purple line is, is will be the fill line. Um, so you'll see that and then it gets leveled at the leveler. Um, and then I highlighted the yellow part there. That's a little cam and that's where the bottle triggers to be kicked out. And so that's how the, um, uh, the, the bottle will transfer over to the corker. Uh, and then um, the float is the brown area. So uh, that is the mechanical float. And then again, there's an electrical uh, float as well. And then the blue will be where the inert gas comes back and blankets the wine. So from an overview, you start at the top at the orange where the wine inlet comes in, it goes down, it fills down below, 
So protecting your wine as it's filling, um, it'll shut off. And then as the bottles come around, uh, it'll start dropping down, call for more wine, and the inert uh, leveling will push the wine back in when it takes uh, a little bit of the uh, overflow and put it back into the bowl. So you've got uh, wine and inert gas. So again, part of uh, this whole technology also includes the ability to run uh, not just cork, but screw caps, crown caps, and T-tops. And there's really any size that you need uh, bottles in the U.S. So you can operate, uh, smallest can be 187, largest can be um, <clears throat> 1.5s. So to kind of give it perspective, uh, you can see how it fits on the right-hand side there uh, into a booth. This is a 10 by 10 booth. Um, but you can also attach a labeler to it. And so the labeler, with the labeler and the Fiamont, uh, it's about 10 feet, which is incredibly small, uh, easy to disconnect and separate, and then put away uh, in your winery whenever you need it. So uh, roll in, roll out, and can easily fit uh, in a small uh, trade show booth, just kind of giving you some representation. The labeler that matches this uh, is the series. Uh, it too, again, is compact. Uh, it has a touchscreen PLC, so it has the latest electronics. Uh, it too is uh, extremely simple to use. Um, the components on this are the same as the high-speed unit. It's just scaled down for the small. Um, the precision of applying a label is critical on a labeler. And so these have servo drives, and again, uh, frequency drive. So uh, it's the same technology, but scaled down for the smaller units. And with this, it comes with a capsular. So you can put the capsule on at the same time, spin down and then put the label on. So, and of course it's all portable. So now I'm gonna open up um, uh, another video and have Chris come on board. Um, this is Chris's, uh, machine and he's going to go through the details of the way he runs it so you can see some other aspects of it actually bottling. Um, so Chris when you're ready tell me I'll start the video. Yeah go ahead. Um, so we're bottling this with water out of a barrel. Um, my pump is to the right there. Uh, we use a rotary load pump for a lot of the things in the winery so we just hook that up to our machine. Um, you can see I have my inner gas right there on the left. Uh, this is me hooking up the pump so that the filler valve can tell it to turn on off. This is me turning the gas on. My machine has subtle differences from the other one because we have the 1800, but it's mostly just electric panel differences. You can't hear this, but the pump turns on right now. You can hear it filling up the filler bowl. And then as the bottles go on the, around the carousel, it finishes filling the valve, turns back off. It comes around the carousel and then that arm right there on the left hand side kicks it off and puts it into the second carousel. Where it's then the vacuum is pulled through the bottle and it corrects the level of that in the head of the neck of the bottle. And this is just me showing that all the fill heights are about the same on each bottle, or they're exactly the same. And then, yeah. It's kind of just reiterating all the things that, that David was saying before. The so levelers there on the left and the cork is in the center? Yes. The nice thing about the gas leveling is that it is putting the gas into the bottle and also pulling it back through into the, the filler. So it's blanketing everything. Okay, Chris, thank you. Uh, so just to let everybody know, this is a Fiamat 1800. So um, part of that is I'm gonna have a little question. Oh, hold on a second. So Chris is the owner winemaker for Anatom Wines. Um, and there's his contact information if you'd like to uh, reach out and talk to him. 
uh, email is good and then you can always chat. Um, so he's been a customer since um, 2016. Um, he purchased a used Fiamon 1800 uh, with circa 1998. And that's why you can see the control panel was up on the right hand side. Uh, the functionality is very similar. Um, he's going to speak and we're going to have a little question and answer uh, or a little commentary dialogue about uh, his, his experiences. And so, um, so let's, so Chris, tell us about why you made uh, the purchase for the little, uh, the Fiamont or a small labeler and, and what did you do before? So our previous unit was a stick spout filler where you would just put the bottle on the filler and then you would then transfer it to a manual hand corker or a floor corker. And that was working for us for a while. And then as we kind of grew in production, we kind of saw the benefits of maybe moving forward with something a little bit larger. And then as we started to look into it, I realized that the footprint was going to be huge for a bottling machine and it was just going to be an astronomical cost. So I started looking around and found this really small unit that kind of gave us semi-automatic um, benefits and I could run it with less people. So I didn't need to have five people on staff that day to run it, um, but we could still get the amount of bottles we needed to finish in one day. So to go so from the street, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so how many people do you normally run? Or I, I have run the machine by myself. It, it turns, it's a little bit, it can be a little bit tough to do it that way, but typically run it with, with two and three people and it's perfect. It's very cohesive. Okay. And so uh, you recommend two people without a problem, three people would be uh, uh, best as uh, for how many yes cases per day kind of approach typically we can do um comfortably we can do about 500 cases a day if you were doing a full eight hour shift okay. with two people and uh, tell us about your experience with uh, the mobile bottling and and the reasons that um you didn't just choose mobile bottling mobile bottling um has its it's cost, you know, the initial cost is just having them come out. The setup, you have to have all of your wines completely ready that day. So if you're doing, you know, 500 cases that day on the truck. Um, we also have a pretty tight space at the winery. And so um, having a truck back into our place is kind of a, an issue. So that's why we've kind of steered away from that anymore. Okay. And in, yeah. any problems you learning the, the equipment when you, when you first purchase it? Cause you didn't no, know. No, just going through the manual kind of, yeah, we got the manual and the manual was pretty clear as to what you need to do at the setup and breakdown. Um, it's all in the manual. So we just followed it that way. Okay. Pretty easy to clean. And very easy to clean. So yeah, we, we just take a 35 gallon uh, tote, fill it full of water and uh, cleaner in there and just, put it through the machine as if we're bottling, kind of like we were doing, take all the corks out of it and then just rinse off the machine. Okay, and what kind of uh, maintenance problems have you had or repairs or any of that in the last? What, I've owned the machine now for, uh, what is it, three years we've owned it. Um, we've had nothing break on it. Uh, we've had no issues. Okay. Great, great. Uh, anything else? Uh, uh, kind of wrap up your kind of feeling on uh, if you had to do it again, would you do something else? Or would you recommend it to other people? Obviously, you're here I, to I, recommend it. Uh, but, uh. Yeah, um, no, it's been a great machine. It's bulletproof. Um, I wouldn't change anything on it. I, I really like how it's super compact. I can wheel it around the winery and just put it away. Um, I can take it out of the winery if I don't need it there or if it's, you know, that we just need the space. So it's compact, it's just been so nice to have that. And also it's not extremely slow. It, it's gonna be able to keep up with us if we grow to be a uh, you know, 4,000 case winery, we can still keep this machine, so. Okay, okay, great. Uh, Chris, did you look at other brands besides the Castrol when you're looking for options to your manual lit, uh, filling and corking system? We did. Um, I can't remember the name of the machine, but it was a similar kind of set up but the the difference between it was it went it had a carousel and you would load the carousel but then when it was finished filling the the bottle 
you would transfer it to the corker by hand. So it was a sec, you'd have to move it over there and then it oh. vacuum corked. So it okay. added a second step to it. So, and also you would have to make sure every fill height was exactly the same because there's no way to correct that. So you'd really rely on the filler bolt to do all the work perfectly. Whereas our filler bowl on this machine, we overfill it in the filler bowl and then it's perfectly corrected consistently with the, um, with the gas uh, transfer. Yeah, and then, so you're that gassing was, the bottle as well as the as well as the filler bowl. Exactly. Yeah. So it kept you know the, the differences were one you had to move it by hand and two you had to have gas either being pumped into the filler bowl or it had to um, and you'd have to make sure everything was perfectly level in the bottle so the bottle yeah. heights were perfect. Well, that's why we chose this one. Okay. Oh, Chris, any uh, any issues that you feel that the uh, setup? I mean, I mentioned that uh, you know it takes really kind of two steps. One is you set the bottle, and then you set the leveler. And uh, so, how long do you think that really takes you to go through and do a setup from or changeover? I don't know how many oh, changeovers you do. So. Um, so from bottle to bottle, we just we can change our star key out. Um, that's the the thing that moves the bottle around. And then we just set the height of the bottle um, with a simple twist of the, um, there's like an arm that you put in there and it adjusts the filler height and the cork height all in one. So it's, it's a one step process, takes a few minutes. And Joe Moody's asking, does unit automatically shut off if you don't remove the filled bottles in time? Uh, Joe, yes it does. The, the bottles slightly overfill and uh, is there, so they're totally slightly overfilled by the time they reach that cam that kicks the bottle over to the corker. So there's no problem with overfilling the bottle to the point where you're overflowing uh, wine onto the machine. Would you like to expand on that, David? Chris, have you ever had problems with uh, uh, levels on the bottles and overflows type of thing? No, um, we run water through it through the beginning, and then I do all the corrections if it's overfilling or you know we make the small adjustments, and then we'll just transfer over into to the barrel or to the tank and we run it that way. So, no, um, and I just saw the question came in about it being, um, does it jam? So if it does jam, there's an automatic stop. The star key will essentially shut off the machine as soon as something feels like it's out of whack. At least right. that is on our machine, I don't know. Right, so the, the star uh, set will break uh, and that'll trip a um, safety to shut off. Yeah. I break, you don't mean it, it gets ruined. It, 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 there's a clutch that disengages. Correct, thank you for uh, clarifying that. It, uh, it, it uh, Nothing breaks. shuts down the uh, circuit on that. <laughs> it can feel something out of adjustment and it'll just shut the machine down. And you have to just kind of put right. the key back into its place. Or the star, the star set. Have you ever bent the spout or anything like that? You've had anything because you know they swing in and out a little bit. The inside the filler bowl is an adjustment where it essentially kicks off the bottle, um, and that can sometimes throw it off a little bit too much. But it's a quick adjustment on the top of the filler bowl, and everything's pretty much back into place. But no bending, nothing of that, nothing okay. to look at. Okay. Chris, is this, uh, is this uh, simple enough to use that even inexperienced uh, seller employees uh, can, can run this safely and efficiently? Um, it's funny you say that. My wife is sitting right next to me here, and she runs the machine with me all the time, and uh, it's, it's super easy. Neither of us knew what we were getting ourselves into, and we bought it, and it was, it was very nice to just know that it was going to work, and it did. So, yeah, you can have people in the winery helping you, and it's not a problem especially that don't have any experience with it. Okay. I hope that answered the question. I think those are great. Um, so let's just talk a, a quick overview for, from our standpoint. Um, uh, the equipment um, is, is uh, we, we, are, we have one piece of equipment coming in uh, to the country. We order these 
a couple of times a year. Um, and so we order them as needed and we get shipments in. So just so everybody knows that uh, the equipment um, isn't always uh, standing around waiting to be uh, uh, delivered, but uh, it does get ordered and we work with Custrol in place in regular business. So, uh, so from a part standpoint as well, um, we have a few parts uh, for different uh, uh, machines. Uh, these machines don't really need many parts. Uh, but we talk to Costra all the time and we get parts in uh, regularly uh, via FedEx. So uh, the dialogue and communications with the company uh, is fantastic um, and they're great to work with. So, so David, uh, what is the lead time? If a, if a customer, say in Texas, were to order a machine uh, that we don't have in country, what would be the average lead time to, say, the Port of Houston? Uh, average lead time would probably be about mm, three months, three to four months, depends on where it is. We're going to, we're going to be trying to be stocking one. Uh, once one moves in, we just move another one in and move it out. And so there's going to be a more of a, a steady stock and move. And then we just keep reordering. We order uh, about every quarter, every quarter. So, uh, it's easy to kind of keep them in the queue as well. So, um, so I think that concludes it. Any other questions from anybody else? Uh, there was a question from someone. Uh, have we calculated any ROI versus using mobile bottling? Um, well, I'm going to turn it over to Chris because I know Chris was uh, clear on uh, what were you thinking uh, on the mobile bottling, Chris? Uh, the cost of the mobile bottling uh, plus I, the requirements this. of starting the mobile bottling, right? They need, they require a full day at the first day. Yeah, so they, our local uh, mobile, bottle, mobile bottling line required us to rent a um, generator. So we don't have three phases at the bar winery, so we had to do that. Um, it was a, it was a $500, I believe, just to, like to show up um, and then it was yeah we needed five employees on staff and so we kind of figured it would be probably a couple of years if we were to be doing you know two three thousand cases um but i don't have the exact figures in front of me but i can get that for everyone yeah but you feel that uh within a year and a half two years you've paid by doing all the just the cost yes aspect, absolutely right? um we've yeah, it's also, it's more than that too. It's a quality aspect for us because I am i was never a big fan of having to, the stress of make sure all of our wines are ready to go. And if say something was just not completely finished or wasn't blended properly, I hated the pressure of having to make sure that that was done on that day because we needed to get something done. Um, and so it, it was more than just that, it was a quality issue. Just putting quality something in bottle and, because- and, and flexibility. So it means that you could then go, exactly. go around and bottle uh, 500 or, uh, 300 cases or a hundred cases. Hundred cases a day. Yeah. Okay. So, and with that, when do you think, uh, you notice the difference in quality of wine versus the old style because of, uh, or have you noticed a quality difference, uh, of the way you were filling previously to, uh, the new process? Um, we would notice it in our white wine specifically because our oxygen ingress would be relatively high, um, especially with the old bottling line with, or the bottling machine where you put it up onto the thing. There was really no, um, there was no gas involved in it. We would try to do gassing before, but you would see a massive oxygen ingress. And with this, we're seeing our whites, especially Chardonnays, um, Rosés, we're not getting nearly the amount of oxygen in there. And it, it's not measurable at that level for us at least. Okay, so you think that the you can you can taste the difference of bottling uh, versus uh, your hand semi-automatic versus Absolutely. the Fiamont. Okay. Yeah, I've noticed it in our Chardonnays, like the shelf life. They if they stay in the you know if we have them in the winery for two some odd you know two years in there, I'll notice that the newer bottling line has kind of made it so that shelf life feels like it's more it's longer. There's just less oxygen at the bottling, which is most of all your oxygen intake anyways is is right at the bottom. 